judge in a courtroom. So I really was thinking maybe he'll do something to me or I might get arrested or something. And um, 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 Basically, what she said was that um, she comes from a country where you don't have the you don't have the free will to even say no. So she honestly felt that had she protested or said no, I can't take this off, that she may go to jail. That would be the consequence because that's what she that's her custom in uh, where she comes from. What country would that be? Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. Iraq. How long has she been? How long have you been in the States? A year. Well, she's come and gone over the years, but she's resided overseas and she's been here approximately a year the last time she's been. Why did you come to America? Uh, the first time I came when I was a kid, and I stayed here two years, and then went back home, and then came back again. Just to answer, follow up to that question, sir, you know, a lot of attorneys are intimidated by judges, and we can't expect lay persons to be not as much as intimidated by these judges. I mean, when you have a court officer basically at the courtroom, you come into a facility, you come downtown, uh, you come to a, such a big uh, facility, you walk into the courtroom, he's up on a uh, stool as if it's God uh, in that courtroom, it's very intimidating. So no, you're going to basically listen. I'm, There's a difference in, you know, uh, putting forward your position and not in disobeying a judge. I'd rather her basically uh, not disobey a judge and do what the judge basically wants uh, as opposed to uh, be argumentative and be uh, in, in contrast to the judge's order. So, I mean, she was following what the judges told her, and we can't really expect of any lay person to sit there and say, uh, no judge, because this, this, and that. We see this in the law field happen all the time where witnesses are very much intimidated by even attorneys and much less judges. So, uh, it's very understandable why Miss. Uh, Nina Bugatti will take such action to basically say, oh, oh, of course, Judge, I'll take it off. I mean, if he tells her to do it, she has to do it. But I think the judge should have seen, again, by his 12-year tenure there, that this in the individual's in the family division have come before me all these times. Uh, to, by her proper dress, even in that courtroom, she could see she had basic clothing up to her arms, full clothing, and the scarf was just a natural uh, part of that uh, religious clothing attire. So I think the judge was uh, very much in the wrong to ask her to do this. And you know, again, this community uh, uh, is, is, is seasoned enough to understand its rights and understands understand the, the rights and privileges protected by our First Amendment. And what we're asking, what Kira is asking for, is the same protections afforded all other religions in this, in this country, and and for us to take it, the necessary steps to make sure those protections are, are afforded to Miss Bernie. And the B, we, we we talked about this today, but I'm sorry. We talked about this today, but could she describe what what it was she was wearing that day? Because it does look different from from what these women are wearing, and also what she's wearing today. And and it's it's hard to tell from the quality of the video. So sure, because, I mean she yeah. was wearing you know you know when somebody says hijab, they wear it in a fashion where they tie it into their face that she's wearing today, or some of them wear it around their neck and tie it into their face, or some of them just wear it around their neck and, and pull over with not actually tying it in into their around their face. Uh, uh, there's different ways of wearing a hijab, you know. Uh, she happened to be wearing it at that time without actually tying it in and just wearing it around her, uh, around her face. Um, the other part I think that you mentioned today, Paul, was the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the clip to hold the hair because actually if someone has long hair, you want to be able to hold it under the, uh, uh, under the hijab itself. And I think that not only probably be more attested to that than I myself. Uh, well, I believe I'm hoping that you or Melanie maybe could explain to us of what the significance is for a woman to be forced to remove as she was, and the fact that you all don't even want us to show it indicates that there is some kind of dishonor or shame or it's inappropriate. And well, I think what's confusing is because we know that uh, different Muslim women dress differently. So if you could kind of articulate what, what, what it was like for her to have to remove it and, and why that is. I will talk first a little bit about the significance of it because we had this issue in a, in a different reason that Melanie could talk about the details about that. But I can tell you that, you know, first of all, you know, one's fundamental belief in religion is so vital and important in this country. And this is what makes this country so great. 
an individual's belief in the practices of their own religion, freedom of religion. Um, there's different types of practices of religion. When someone is forced to basically take an exception to that, they feel that they don't have such freedoms of religion. And that strikes at the core of, of, of a fundamental belief that we hold so dear in this country. And we basically model it around the world, but basically this is what we stand for in this country, the bill of, you know, the human rights and what have you. The fact that uh, an individual is told to uh, remove your scarf, uh, it's basically an onslaught on that person's fundamental belief. And some people have problems, and even if you tell them to shave their beard and testify, uh, for instance, in court, that's, they, want, they are not normal themselves, just by the fact that they have to shave their beard and what have you. But asking a person to actually remove her scarf and be visible to a male counterpart, it's very demeaning. But I think no one can test that to you further. In regards to the significance of the scarf, I think it's, it's important to get an understanding of why we wear it to begin with. And the reason why is out of sheer and utter modesty. Because the, the, the scarf that we wear covers our hair, but not only that, we wear modest dresses as, as well. We wear long sleeves and we cover our legs. So it's, it's out of sheer modesty um, of appearance and, and dress and, and covering your beauty in, in some sense, your hair. Um, and so to have to unveil and uncover that, whether it be your hair, whether it be a body part, is very is, is demeaning and humiliating. And one, when one is accustomed to wearing the hijab, to covering, to a certain way of dress and a certain way of acting, to have to then uncover, it's, it's, um, you almost feel revealed. Or um, you feel, they're definitely very vulnerable, but understandably so humiliated and embarrassed. So that's the, that's the understanding behind that. It's, com it's completely 110% out of modesty so that we're judged by our actions and the things that we do and say rather than the way we look. Okay. Because actually it's easier for most people to understand the, the legal part than, the, than, than that part, and that's what we're trying to get at. Can you tell us what, uh, what we know that this has come up in uh, local court because there's a Supreme Court. So you decided to take it into federal court. Tell us what relief you're looking for uh, aside from uh, a clarification. Is there any monetary? Well, Is there any apology? Yeah. Is well, you know, first of all, I, I want to very much distinct, uh, make a distinction from this case to the other case with the full scar bill where the, where the person, where the judge can't see the face. Uh, the Michigan Rules of Evidence uh, 611 basically was recently amended by the Michigan Supreme Court to basically say that the judge has control in order to, in clothing attire, in order to see the face and the demeanor and to see the, who that person is. None of these factors or elements were there in this particular case. What this judge did was take it upon himself to basically uh, set the standard as to control his uh, uh, attire in his courtroom without any benefits to uh, the fundamental beliefs and religious beliefs of an individual. And this is why we, we, we sued the federal court. What we're asking the federal judge basically uh, to do is basically uh, uh, enter an order compelling all Wayne County Circuit Courts, and all courts basically in the state for that matter, uh, and district courts from uh, uh, preventing them from uh, having witnesses remove their uh, veil before testifying in court, as this judge did. So we're asking for basically for an injunctive order in that fashion uh, for, to, to prevent them from doing that and declaring declaratory relief in that fashion uh, to have all state judges and district court judges from uh, asking their witnesses to remove their veils before testifying. Any um, money or apology? Or well, or we, we, you know, we would definitely, uh, I mean, from the, from a kind of a non, uh, 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 non uh, legal but quasi legal sense, we are asking for basically the judge to, uh, uh, from a care stand, but I think we're asking the judge to uh, enter some type of, uh, state some type of apology to this, uh, to this lady. Um, you know, you may, uh, uh, you may, you, you know, there are, there might be statements out there that say, well, maybe this judge, uh, uh, they may come forward and say, well, maybe he had uh, before allowed individuals to testify with a scarf on, but obviously that was not the, the that was not the situation here, and I don't know if that that is true or not, but I think there may, there may be some allegations there. The fact of the matter is that Miss Abigail uh, was not afforded her protections that this Constitution so dearly protects. But you be, you're making a distinction, but uh, I think you're saying that what happened here wouldn't be covered by the rules of evidence that's recently amended. But are you asking a judge, and I haven't had a chance to read through this yet, to 
restrict those rules as they've been set by the Supreme Court? No, that's for a later case. But in this case, particularly, no, because we don't have these issues prevalent in this particular place. The Michigan Rules of Evidence was amended in order just to the judge could basically see the face. I mean, it was it was amended because of my other case in federal court, the Gil Muhammad case, alleging that 